Hello everyone, my name is Yeniha Garwal from BSP Solutions and the topic for today is Ledger's Overview. In Oracle Fusion applications, we work in the general ledger and the sub-ledger application, applications. So Oracle Fusion applications reflect the traditional segregation between the general ledger and the associated sub-ledgers. The sub-ledgers can be accounts payable application, account receivable applications, cash, management applications and many others in which the specific transactions relating to accounts payable receivables and etc are recorded and in the general ledger the adjustment entries or the periodically uh, adjustments are posted the detailed transaction information is captured in the sub ledgers and the periodically imported and posted in the summary or the detail to the ledgers a ledger determines the currency, the chart of accounts and calendar, ledgers, processing options and accounting methods for its associated subledgers. Each accounting setup requires a primary ledger and optionally one or more secondary ledgers and reporting currencies. The number of ledgers and subledgers are unlimited and they are determined by our business structure and the reporting requirement. If you will see the diagram which is presented in the screen, the chart of accounts, calendar, currencies, and the accounting method are mapped with the primary or the secondary ledger to enable the accounting configuration processes. And then the general ledger balance cubes, which are uh, used for the reporting purposes, are created. So we can say a primary ledger contains four Cs, the chart of account, calendar, currency, and accounting convention or the accounting method. Primary ledgers are connected to reporting currencies and secondary ledgers to provide complete reporting options. We map the chart of accounts for the primary ledger to the chart of accounts for the secondary ledger. Legal entities are assigned to ledgers, both primary and secondary, and balancing segments are assigned to the legal entities. Business units must be connected to primary ledger and default legal entities. Business, under the business units, we record the transaction across the legal entities. So we can say all these, the ledgers, legal entities, balancing segment, business units are mapped with each other for recording the transactions. So say, uh, in the diagram, if you can see the corporate primary ledger is linked with the uh, subsidiary primary ledger, legal entities and balancing segments are linked with these legal entities. Now all those are linked with the business units and under these business units we record the transaction. To link uh, the sub subsidiary primary ledger with secondary ledger we map the chart of accounts and in the same way we can link all these things all these ledgers legal entities to record the transactions under the primary ledger. A primary ledger contains four C's which are required for creating a primary ledger, which, we, which I have uh, just told you. If any of these C's changes, there will be a requirement for another primary ledger. Understanding the primary ledger, secondary ledger, and the reporting currencies. The primary ledger is the main record keeping document. It records the transactional balances, and is closely associated with the subledger transaction. So first we have to define the primary ledger in the system. Now, how we will determine that how many primary ledger must be there? Suppose we have two countries in which our organization is operating and both are having different reporting currencies. So there will be a requirement of different PL for those as one of the C has been changed. We cannot use the same primary ledger for another uh, legal entity as the reporting requirements of that country will be different from the country for which we have designed the primary ledger. So there must be separate primary ledger for both the countries. Now comes the secondary ledger. It is an optional ledger which we can create to link it to the primary ledger and it can differ from its primary ledger. Uh, by using a different accounting method or the chart of accounts or the accounting calendar currency or processing option. So secondary ledgers are linked with PL, but only for the purpose of tracking and alternating accounting. Say there is a PL which uses a 
PL is the primary ledger, which uses the gap principles. So you can have a secondary ledger linked with this PL for the IFRS accounting requirement. And this way you can create a secondary ledger and link it with the primary ledger. The reporting currency is the currency which maintains and reports accounting transactions in additional currency. Each primary and secondary ledger is defined with a ledger currency. We should maintain the ledger in a currency in which a majority of transactions are denominated. If we use the local currency, the compliance requirement will also get easier. If we maintain and report accounting records in different currencies, we can do this by defining one or more reporting currencies for that ledger. So this was an overview of the primary ledger, secondary ledger, reporting currencies, and how these primary ledgers are linked with the business units, legal entities, and balancing segment values. In the upcoming video, we'll see how do we create the primary ledger and how we link it with the legal entities and balancing segments and specify the ledger options in the primary ledger. So that was all for the day. Thank you. Hope you have understood the same.